Let's talk about the specifics of cash discounts. There are three ways that cash discounts are given. The first is called ordinary dating. The second is called ROG or receipt of goods. And the third is called EOM or end of month. EOM or end of month. The only difference among these three methods, these are cash discount methods. Another thing that it's called is credit terms. The example we used before was 210 net 30. That is ordinary dating because it doesn't have ROG after it and it doesn't have EOM after it. It doesn't have anything after it. It's ordinary dating. And the only difference among these three is when does the clock start? The clock starts in ordinary dating on the invoice date. I make a sale. I date the invoice today to get it in my books. I send it to you electronically or by the mail. The clock starts on the invoice date and you've got 10 days from that date to make your payment to get this 2% cash discount. Receipt of goods. This would say 210 net 30. Uh, let's do it this way. 210 ROG. It may or may not say net 30. We always assume net 30 unless it says something different. It could say 210 net 60 ROG. But ROG means the clock doesn't start until the receipt date. What if you order something from me today and it's back ordered? What if you order steel girders for the new nursing building from me today and we know it's going to take four months to fabricate those and get them to the job site? Well, that's not very fair for me to bill you now and you have to pay me within 10 days and you haven't even got the stuff and it's going to be months before you do. So I go ahead and send you the bill. It's got the invoice date on it because I want to make sure I get it in my accounts payable system so I don't lose that money or lose track of it. But the clock for this cash discount is not going to start till the day those steel beams show up on your job site. Then you have 10 days from then to pay it and get the cash discount. So that's a fair way to do it in businesses where you know it's going to be a long time between the time you order it and the time you get it. Then the third way, which is a very common way of doing it, is called EOM. EOM. By the way, I have a, uh, a resource on the website that lists all these, summarizes it, tells you what you use, what you ignore, that sort of thing. But this 210 EOM says the clock starts at the end of some month. Now, before I explain that, I'd like to do some examples of the first two so you can see how they work, and then we'll do EOM. We've already looked at ordinary dating. If we said the invoice date was June 5th, and we had 210 net 30, this is ordinary dating. The invoice amount is $400. We'd say clock starts when? Ordinary dating, it starts on the invoice date. So the invoice date was June 5th, that's when the clock starts. We've got 10 days to get our cash discount, we have 30 days before we're late. So if the question said, what is the end of the discount period? That's the period of time during which you get a discount. So they're asking for what day goes right here? That'd be June 15th, wouldn't it? If they said, what day is the end of the credit period? In other words, they're extending us credit for 30 days. We don't have to pay and there's no interest charge. The credit period is the entire timeline. 
So that would be our July 5th, wouldn't it? 30 days from June 5th would be July 5th. And now if they say they paid the bill on uh, June 12th, how much do they write the check for? Is June 12th within our 2% window? Yes, it is. It's before the 15th. So we would knock 2% off of that and say they're going to write the check for $392, saving $8. Now, the truth is, very few people would pay on June 12th if they can get the same discount by paying on June 15th. Everybody's either going to pay just before the end of the <laughs> discount period or just before the end of the credit period if they don't want the cash discount and don't want the late penalty. And if they don't care about the late penalty, then who knows when they're going to pay. All right. If that doesn't bother them, then you don't know when they're going to pay. Does that feel okay as far as ordinary dating? Clock starts on the invoice date and we go from there. Now, receipt of goods, let's say we had this exact same problem. Invoice date was June 5th for $400, but it was 210 net 30 ROG. And they would have to tell us when the goods arrived. They'd have to tell us the receipt date. The receipt date, let's say, is uh, September 21st. September 21st. Now tell me the end of the discount period and tell me the end of the credit period. Well, again, a timeline is very helpful, isn't it? In ROG, when does the clock start? It starts on the receipt date, doesn't it? So it starts on September 21. We've got 10 days to get that 2% discount. So what's 10 days after September 21? It'd be September 31 if there were 31 days in September. So it's October 1, isn't it? October 1st would be the end of the discount period. October 1st. And what's 20 more days after that? October 21. We could either say 30 days from September 21 or we could say 20 days after October 1st. However you want to look at it because it's 30 days. So that would be the end of the credit period. So, ordinary dating and ROG are pretty easy to explain and fairly easy to do. The hardest thing about ROG and ordinary dating is that if you're a bookkeeper, you've got to keep track of all these different dates when things are due. If this bill comes in before June 15th, then they get a 2% discount. If that bill comes in before October 1st, they get a 2% discount. That's a nightmare. Obviously, you've got computer programs to keep track of it and da 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 da. But that's one reason why many businesses use EOM, end of month. Here's how this works the clock starts at the end of the invoice 